thousand morning we're tend to crash okay my friend is already out at crash first crash for a day should be should be down here this way First class for the day should be this one here. Welcome back, class. Class dismissed. Second class for the day. Today is my actual first day back. Is this one? Good morning, class, and welcome back. Class dismissed. My last class for the day into the afternoon, but most likely I'll wag the afternoon class here. Good morning, class, and welcome back. Okay, class dismissed. Have fun at break. Man, I can't believe it. Summer is over already. Man, it seems like yesterday summer was here. But I'm happy I'm back back at school too. I'm sad the summer is over, but I'm happy. At the same time, I'm back at school. Man. Cannot believe it. Hell yeah, buddy. I just can't believe it, dude. Summer is already over. Today is my actual first day back at school. Man. Hell yeah, I cannot believe it, dude. I just can't believe it. It's smoking a fucking gym. <laughs> like in a basketball court area. What is this place? Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. Nothing? Okay. It's not a smoking gym. It smokes somewhere else. Where can I smoke at? Yeah, and smoke and watch the Babadook. The Babadook. 
2014 was another great year, and it saw the releases of two of the greatest horror movies of the 2010s. Both also used horror as a metaphor. It Follows was a masterpiece of independent filmmaking that used its titular It Monster to represent sexually transmitted diseases. Meanwhile, first-time director Jennifer Kent was using The Babadook to tell a morose and traumatic story about depression. Of course The Babadook works on a purely physical level, as its ghostly appearance, erratic movements, and gravelly voice all inspire horror. But much of its fear stems from what it represents, successfully tapping into the human condition and expressing the harmful effects of grief. Krampus next to Gremlins in the non-traditional Christmas movie starring Deadly Monsters category. Krampus has its roots in real-world folklore, as it's said to be a Christmas creature who punishes children for misbehaving. The movie version of Krampus embarks on a horrific and bloody rampage, targeting all the naughty people and sending their souls to hell. I just wanted Christmas to be like it used to be. also uses the help of various creatures and mechanisms, including his evil elves and some possessed toys. Christmas movies are filled with boring age-old tropes, so it was refreshing to see one so gleefully unhinged. Just don't be naughty and enjoy. 2016, Diana Walter, Lights Out. In December of 2013, David F. Sandberg released an independent short titled Lights Out through YouTube. It proved to be an instant hit, and both Sandberg and his wife moved to Hollywood to begin work on a feature-length adaptation. It follows a malevolent entity known as Diana Walter, who was once a 13-year-old with a rare skin condition, but who is now a violent ghost who only appears in the dark. Eyes. It. adaptation of Stephen King's It was widely anticipated. The $35 million budget promised good things, and It has always remained one of King's most popular novels. The results were nothing short of fantastic. Bill Skarsgård had big clown shoes to fill by replacing Tim Curry as Pennywise, but he knocked it out of the park. Let him go! No, I'll take him. I'll take all of you. Skarsgård imbued Pennywise with the perfect amount of boastful confidence, as the character has long been known for his playful tormenting. The laugh was also spectacular, as was that creepy thing he did with his eyes. Pennywise literally feeds on the fear of children, and that fear extends to the audience. Horror movie villains don't get much more iconic or scarier than this. 2018, The Monsters, A Quiet Place. The concept behind A Quiet Place is so deceptively simple it makes you think, how has this not been done before? The movie takes place in a post-apocalyptic America that's been wiped out by sound-sensitive monsters known as Death Angels. Any little noise is enough to draw their attention, and they pounce with surprising speed and dexterity. They're also incredibly ruthless, and the film never shies away from tragedy, as evidenced by its heartbreaking opening minutes. Monsters also inspire a lot of potential for world building, as many questions remain as to their origin and biology. Put simply, these are fascinating creatures that are both tantalizing, merciless, and richly mysterious. Color out of space. Author H.P. Lovecraft 
is renowned for his unique style of literature, his themes often revolving around incomprehensible horror and the resulting insanity of the witness. Do you have any idea how much those animals cost us? They are alpacas. Alpacas. One of the most popular works in his lifetime was The Color Out of Space, published in 1927 and adapted by Richard Stanley 92 years later. <laughs> involves a malignant color that comes to Earth on a meteorite and begins affecting the local Gardner family with its otherworldly influence. Like the best of Lovecraft's fiction, the movie never goes into detail about the color. The audience is forced to answer their own questions, and that often proves to be the scariest type of horror. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2020, Cthulhu, Underwater. And speaking of H.P. Lovecraft, Cthulhu remains his most popular creation. The subject of The Call of Cthulhu, the massive squid-like thing has been a pop culture fixation for decades and inspired its own shared fictional universe known as the Cthulhu Mythos. Underwater is loosely inspired by the Cthulhu Mythos, and it features an amazing rendition of its eponymous creature. It's a great depiction of a classic literary monster horrifically capturing its unimaginable size, grotesque and alien physical appearance, and incredible sense of danger. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. But something went wrong and it made its way onto numerous supermarket shelves after being detected in some Worcester sauce in Italy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most expensive product recalls in history. This morning, an urgent new message from Samsung. This is not a food safety issue, it's an issue of inhumane treatment. I think it's a tough holiday season, and I think it's going to be tough for toy manufacturers. For this list, we're looking at the costliest company-initiated product returns and why they needed to happen. Let us know in the comments if you've ever been part of these or any product recalls. Number 20, Infantino Sling Rider Baby Slings. First thing we're saying to them is don't panic. Blew up after ingesting them, so Kangua gave the victim 20 euros and then uploaded the video. Naturally, it received a lot of backlash. The prankster wasn't remorseful at all in initial interviews and was eventually arrested. In 2019, he was banned from YouTube, ordered to pay 20,000 euros to the man, and sentenced to 15 months in prison. I'll give him fucking wife and prison. Better yet, death row. In 2016, huh. Scottish YouTuber Mac Meachin, a.k.a. Count Dankula, decided it would be funny to upload a video of himself training his girlfriend's pug to perform a Nazi salute. He also riled the dog up into reacting to an offensive, anti-Semitic question. This led to his arrest for being grossly offensive, which sparked public debates about freedom of speech. I just want everybody to know that I don't actually believe in anything that I was saying in the video. The whole purpose of it was just to annoy my girlfriend. I actually hate racism in any way, shape, or form. Meachin claims that the video was supposed to make his girlfriend laugh, but the court found this lacked credibility since his girlfriend wasn't subscribed to his channel. He was ordered to pay an £800 fine, but refused, instead donating the same amount to the Glasgow Children's Hospital charity. However, £800... Uh. was later seized from his bank account. <clears throat> Number seven, Russland's 
Sokolovsky, Pokemon Go to Orthodox Church. Pokemon Go was a craze that swept the world, encouraging kids and adults alike to travel their local areas while trying to catch their favorite Pokemon. The Russian government would prefer that you not catch them all, however, at least not in church. The Russian media had warned that playing Pokemon Go on holy sites could result in jail time. But Russian YouTuber Ruslan Sokolovsky actively challenged this, going to Yekaterinburg's Church of All Saints and broadcasting his adventures to his followers. The YouTuber was given a suspended sentence of three and a half years for inciting religious hatred. Оскорбительно высказывать в отношении того, в кого они верят, это тоже совсем плохо. Number six, troll station, fake art robbery. The members of this UK prank group have been arrested on several occasions over the years. In 2015, they donned tights over their heads and created a panic at the National Portrait and Tate Britain galleries. Along with a speaker blaring alarm sounds, they shouted and acted like they were stealing paintings, terrifying the patrons and sending them running. He's even collaborated with Roman Atwood to fake an ATM robbery, which resulted in the two getting arrested. Hmm. Right now you're insane. What the What's going on? You guys, is this, is this so somebody shot at We own the ATM, it's okay. all ours. And that wasn't the last time Zadorovsky got in trouble. Hey guys, it's about to happen. When on his own, it's usually because he's somewhere he's not supposed to be. From streaking during the 2014 FIFA World Cup, <laughs> 2016 NBA Finals, and 2017 World Series to climbing the Hollywood sign, he's made a career out of breaking the rules. But none of those compare to the time he really peaked. The peak in question? One of the pyramids in Giza, which he climbed to the top of when visiting in 2020. Egypt, I love you. No disrespect to you. I just want to bring a warning to the world. We need to help Australia. The stunt landed him in jail for five days. Number four, White Boy 7th Street, drug felony charges. Alexander Wax was a gaming streamer who was used to police kicking down his door but not through any fault of his own. Hold on, guys, give me a second here. While streaming Day Z in 2014, Wax quickly disappeared from his desk, only for an officer to come into frame with a dog sniffing around. Turns out he was swatted. This was the third time that month that Alex and his housemate Kelly Pop had false reports called on them. But this time, it ended badly. Marijuana was found on the property, prompting the YouTuber's arrest. All charges were dropped, and you guys have no idea how how thankful I am. He wasn't charged in the end, and the experience does not seem to have turned him off the green stuff. And yeah, we're in Breckenridge, Colorado, high in the mountains. Number three, J Station. Fake death leads to abuse allegations. Jason Matthew Ethier was a Canadian YouTuber who became infamous for his pranks and staged 3 a.m. challenges. What's up, well, guys? Back with another 3 a.m. challenge. As you guys know, my girlfriend Alexia just passed away in a tragic accident. In 2018, he was arrested at Walt Disney World for trespassing and resisting arrest. But much worse was to come. This needs to go all over the place. He got his stuff stolen, and now they're arresting him. In 2020, he announced that his girlfriend, Alexia Morano, had been killed in an accident with a drunk driver. That's it right there. She came here just to see if it was okay. He proceeded to make several videos milking her death for views where he visited the crash site and even tried to talk to her ghost. Is there any spirits here that wish to talk to us? <gasps> you see that? But she wasn't dead, and the YouTube community was outraged. Morano left him and accused him of abuse, leading to his arrest and charges of assault and assault with a weapon. And I felt like he was trying to isolate me from my friends, from my family, and I just felt really isolated and alone. He and Morano ended up reuniting soon after, but not for long. Here he comes 
Let me get you. Break up, go out. Break up, go out. One of those couples. Let me get you. Okay, now. No more about. Okay, cool. Alex 
So at 8 a.m., she can put her patients first. For all you parents who are deeply offended by... Sportsbet's new bet with mates. Start your group and share in the moment. New from Sportsbet. Law enforcement. The couple was arrested for misdemeanor child endangerment and charged the... Get ready with daily readiness on Fitbit. Until then, you know. Let's chill. Okay. 
kids have cancer, but obviously, I think people should but know by now. Legendary Leah has seen herself in trouble a handful of times, from flashing her viewers to insensitive language. She has yet to be given what some would call real punishments. Her most offensive moment, however, comes from one of her handfuls of seemingly drunk rants in April of 2016, where she went into a full-blown tirade about kids with cancer. Several folks in her chat tried to get her to stop, but to no avail. Shortly after, Leah would apologize and announce she'd be donating to a fund. Number 6, Invader V. And it doesn't matter how broke you are, if you have time to watch Twitch, you have, you have $10, truly. One thing a streamer should never do is guilt trip their audience into spending money on them. That is precisely what Invader V did in April 2020, just as the pandemic was storming the world. During a stream, V had made comments towards her viewers, calling the ones who couldn't afford a subscription irresponsible, and even double downing on her statements when her chat called her out. What you mean to say is, I'm so irresponsible with my money, I can't support the entertainment that I enjoy. Let's just say the internet was not having it, and V would face heavy criticism across social media and news outlets. She would later apologize on stream for the damage had already been done. The lesson here, kids? Be respectful and understanding of others' financial situations. This was wrong in any context, but especially in the context of a global pandemic. Number five, Hassana B. This is so insane. You may know Hassan B as Hassan Piker of the Young Turks YouTube channel. Others might know him under an entirely different light after what went down in August 2019. During a stream, Piker had mocked U.S. Representative Dan Crenshaw for his missing eye before making some pretty harrowing statements in regards to September 11. In addition to a suspension from Twitch, Piker was widely criticized by politicians and the media. A few days after the stream, Piker would realize his hurtful remarks and apologize, deeming his behavior as inappropriate. Good thing, chop, 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 and if you're a legal permanent resident, it's okay. 